uh, good afternoon, everybody. She, you guys, you, somebody made her mute. Can you guys unmute her, please? She's muted. <laughs> She's my, my co-presenter. She cannot be muted. Well, so we don't waste time. I'm just going, I'm just going to, um, to, to introduce myself. I am Professor uh, Natalina Montero. I teach political science at East Los Angeles College and Women and Gender Studies. I'm also the political director for the Los Angeles College Faculty Guild, and I am an elected a board member for the Faculty Association of California Community College. Uh, Kelly is still muted. Um, I don't know who can unmute her, uh, but if you guys could do that, Kelly, next slide. I guess I'm going to take Kelly next slide because I don't. I it's not working for me. So we, um, well, she went directly there, but I could do the agenda. Go back. Thank you. Um, so we're going to do. Uh, uh, hopefully, maybe I should introduce her. That's Kelly Velasquez. She is also a professor of uh, political science at East Los Angeles College, and she's running for to become a FAC board um, member. So if you know anybody, vote for her because he's at large. She's going to be the secretary. Um, so without further ado, I am going to uh, show you guys a little agenda that we have together, which is going to introduce the section, explain with then Kelly. Hopefully by that time, Kelly can explain the breakout. Uh, and we're going to have a breakout to have a smaller dialogue, uh, smaller groups. We're going to have breakup groups. I hope it works. And, and then we're going to report back. And then uh, we are going to talk about some anti-racist tool, uh, toolbox and some final comments. Uh, Kelly, please. Um, so if you are a faculty, bear with me. But I thought I'm going to talk to some of the students. Uh, no, it didn't go to what it's supposed to be. There we go. Okay, finally. So can you put the, the PowerPoint back on? <laughs> Technical difficulties, you guys, it happened in real world. Um, okay, so um, next, Kelly, please. So let me talk a little bit to you guys a, a little bit about um, identifying and, and dismantling various structure of racism. This is what we wanna do. Our community colleges, right? Uh, we have um, about 80%, I would say 80% of the California Community College are minorities. Uh, we have um, a lot of um, faculty that doesn't look like us, right? And uh, we need to fix this system. And also we need to fix the system of what are we teaching you guys? Uh, because uh, history is written by the victor. So we need to talk about different things uh, that is going wrong in our community college so we can make it. Uh, uh, the true power force that it is. So the manifestation, right, exploring the multiple manifestation of racism that have prevailed and continue to prevail the community colleges system in, in California. So racism, right, it's not very uh, destructive to people of color, but it, it is self-destructive to, to many white people. Uh, racism is anti-American and anti-human. This is Heather McGee, uh, her 2021 uh, book, uh, recommend it to everybody. Uh, I'll have a, a, a list at the end. Uh, so racism, like literally murders our spirit, right? Racism is traumatic. Racism is exhausting. I am exhausting talking about racism. Uh, and it is a, a life of doubt. Racism break down what we call black bodies, minds, and spirit and make them disposable, okay? So this is why we say black lives matter because uh, our bodies is viewed as disposable. Kelly, please. Uh, uh, another, another one, misconception. I said this is more for the students to have an idea. What is a biological racist? It is the one who exper experiencing, right? The idea that races are meaningful, different in their biology. We not, right? that these differences create a, a hierarchical of values that uh, the Europeans uh, began in, in the, as late as 15th century or even before, if we talk about the Greek methodology, right? And um, that the Europeans were always put on top and, and, and then you were classified according to your skin, uh, um, melanoma or, or shade. Kelly, please. Um, just keep go. Just keep it going. Um, racist misconception, right? Race is a social constructed. You you might think that we all know this, uh, but I have students in my classes uh, arguing with me that race no race is that race is a thing. It exists. No, it's not biology, right? We, I said we more than humans are 
homo, homo sapiens sapiens. That's our genome species. We all humans. We can interbreed with each other. We can have kids with each other, right? Have beautiful kids. Uh, and 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 you know, from from I don't know, from the Andes to the Himalayas, we can we can uh, multiply and and be beautiful bunch of people. But race is fundamental a power construct, right? Of, of blend differences that that lives that socially, right? That we have created. Race creates new form of power, the power to categorize and judge to elevate and downgrade and to include and exclude. Um, you know, so um, I, I got some ideas from uh, Ibrahim Candy and also Professor Bettina, uh, Bettina Love and of course, Bell Hook. Okay, so there's some of these ideas. Kelly, please. Um, and race is a mirage. This is Ibra Ibrahim Candy, right? Talks about race being a mirage, right? That uh, we are what we see ourselves as, whether what we, see exist or not that's another story right you see as we think like oh yeah we're different races so we have different intelligence or or, or i'm better than you because this is what you you are telling yourself to see even if what i put in parentheses we yeah we are seeing is an illusion that race is a mirage but not that we do well to see right while never forgotten that it is a mirage never forgotten that it is the the powerful light of, of, of racist power that makes the mirage, right? That the, the people that are racist, misconception. When people talk about, oh, blue lives matter, white lives matter. Remember that, you know, not white people are not being killed at the same level that black and brown people are killed by the police. Okay, so, so Kelly, please. Um, I'll let you guys talk and ask questions. Um, Racism again, what is racism? That is racism versus anti-racism. Uh, people use this term, what is anti-racism? They really don't even know. Oh yeah, I'm not a racist, so I'm gonna practice anti-racism, but they don't know what to do, right? Racism isn't a descriptive word, right? It is a pejorative word. It, 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 the, opposite, the opposite of racism isn't that I'm, I'm no racist, right? We heard people say that, I'm no racist. It is anti-racism, and what is the difference, right? One endorses either the idea of racial hierarchical as a racist, a racial equ equity as an anti-racist. One either believes right, problems that are rooted in the groups of people as a racist or located the roots, locates the roots of the problem in the power and the policies as an anti-racist. Uh, one either allows racial inequalities to persist as, as a racist or confronts racial inequalities as an anti-racism. The claim that of I'm not a racist, neutrally right, is a mark, is a mask of racism. So, so in, in a sense, I wanted to give you a background when we start talking about this stuff so you can have some of this stuff in mind. I think uh, next, Kelly, I think it's you. Is that yours or that's mine? It's still mine. Yeah, um, one expression, right? Uh, I, I love uh, Fanny Lou Hamer. I, I teach African-American studies courses sometimes. I love her because the idea that she says, uh, nobody's free until every, everybody is free. So one who is expressing the idea that racial groups are equal and, and none needs to developing and it, it is supporting, supporting policies that reduce racial inequality. So if don't be like I heard this morning, somebody said, don't be right an ally, be a cons con conspirator, right? Get arrested, get your body right in harm's way. Then you are you are acting as an anti-racist. But just say that I'm no racist, right? Or, or, or keep quiet when the policies favor you, right? When for example, I'm talking about if I'm talking about faculty. When, when they're hiring you because of your color of your skin, they hire you because they feel more comfortable because you're white and you don't say anything, right? You become, right, that racist, even though you claim you're not a racist. Um, go ahead, Kelly. Maybe you can just. All right. So I figured out what the problem is, is that I'm in two Zooms, but it's okay. So I'm sure you can't see my face because I'm on another Zoom with my face, but it's all good. So uh, 
before the breakout, um, I wanted to remind us all, um, what, using some of Ibram Kendi's words, what it means, what is required to be an anti-racist. All right, so before we jump into this breakout room, I want to make sure that we all understand that in order to be anti racist, it requires us to be persistently self aware. Right, we have to have self awareness, we have to constantly self criticize right self criticism is so important and lastly uh, regular self examination, we have to revisit this stuff. All right, we have to revisit the, the, these different um, things that we're learning about and what it means to be anti-racist, right? Because what we've done in the past, we might have not seen as problematic, but now that we have the words and the knowledge for it, we see that it is, right? So it's incredibly important for us um, to go ahead and, and be, um, again, self-aware, self-critical, um, and self-examine ourselves, okay? So before we jump into the breakout rooms, I'm going to explain uh, what we're going to be doing. Um, so the first thing is that we're going uh, to be in those breakout rooms for 25 minutes. And for the first five minutes, we want you to uh, silently reflect, all right? And we have, we have some questions for you to, to reflect on. Okay, and whatever that looks like for you. For some of you, it might be sitting quietly looking at the questions. For some of us, like myself, I need to jot things down. Um, you can open up a Word document and type it out, whatever helps you reflect, okay? Um, the first question is, what would a liberated anti-racist institution look like and feel like? What concrete steps could you take within your institution to alter the relations of power, to dismantle racism? How do we discuss white supremacy? And lastly, what personal steps could you take to decolonize your own emotional and intellectual life? Okay, these questions are intended to challenge you and for you to really think outside of the box. Do not limit yourself to what you think is the right answer, okay? Um, and actually, I've, I've done these. Um, I, I, I reflect on these, um, the, the two different times that I've, um, I've had to do this, and every time I come out with something different, right? So I really am challenging you to think outside of the box, okay? After the five minutes of reflection, we want you all to spend 20 minutes discussing and contributing to the Google slide for your breakout room. So I'll be sharing that link in the chat in just a, section, in just a second. And I'm gonna share um, what it is um, that I want you to uh, look at. Oh, one second, I, I had to exit out. A homeland or invade our homeland, okay? Um, this was uh, this idea of white supremacy is because they were superior than us. I know one of the person says, oh, but I don't consider that white um, as superior than me. Yeah, you don't consider, but you need to deconstruct that person that thinks this is better than you. And this is what we need to bring into bear. And education, right, it says, you know, this, this tool, um, I, I know of, uh, Professor Vasquez was talking about Ibrahim Kendi, and I always talk about that is more to, to, uh, to other things, right? Or, or it says all teachers, regardless of race or ethnicity, need to know that racism is not right separate from economic economic class, and that that and that because somebody comes to school without it, how you expect that person to succeed, right? You need you need to have food security in mind, right? The administration need to to need to address that, and it says that resistance, right? Is it its various form is always an option, right? You have to resist that. Okay, they talk about this field of education. That's what I wanted to bring it back. I said, let's talk about it in the main session because white rage, where we talk about especially public education, somebody feel like, oh, if we're going to help, if we're going to hire faculty that look like our students, that means that we white people are gonna be losing. And this is what Prop 16 was all about people. We were trying to get people to be hired, to take into consideration not to hire people that were unqualified, 
No, we want them to be, to take into consideration the everybody, right? Because sometimes people say, oh, I feel more comfortable if we hire this person because that person looks like them, right? And he it says, it's like to think that education is untouched by white supremacists, white rage and anti-blacknessness and education uh, are somehow immune, right? And, and the, 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 but they continue to perpetuating this dark suffering, right? BIPOC, right? Black, indigenous people of color. It could continue to perpetuate the suffering. That education from the onset, right, was built on the white supremacists, right? That we had segregation in the United States. We had segregation in South Africa. We had segregation in Portugal, where I was born, unfortunately, right? There was this segregation going on that it was based on the white supremacists, right? That anti-blackness and sexism, right? So, so she talked about, next, uh, Kelly, please. Uh, he 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 Helen, you have a hand up? Um, Sorry, that was an accident. Okay, okay. So what do we need to do, okay? And, and this is goes to, to all of you because one day you might end up being a teacher. Keep this in mind, right? What we need to shift from? education that merely strive to reinforce domination, right? It keeps reinforced domination. We've seen it. Like I, like I told the other group when I was in there, you got to remind, remember that not all of us live in California. Not all of us are here in the community college, right? And I told them, I gave an example, one of my students, and she's Professor Velasco's student too, that is at Berkeley, the teacher asked him to write a paper to defend slavery. That's the white domination. Why would you asking them to write a paper to defend slavery? No, write a paper to talk about all the harms that slavery have caused. So this is the teacher needs to transition. He needs to shift from to education as the practice of freedom. If you teach to be free, to teach people how to be free, right? In their own world. Kelly, please, okay? Uh, I know we almost uh, we almost out of time, but there was some other stuff. I don't think I'm going to be able to 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 do all this, but you know, and I can summarize what they what they're talking about is this idea that you think that education, right, is going to solve all the problems of the United States. That education is going to solve the problem of unemployment, joblessness, poverty, uh, but it hasn't. But education did not cause all these problems. What caused the problems? She says is racism. Racism is the key is the problem. Racism is that, you know, built on centuries, and this is your white supremacist, is built on centuries of ideas that seek to, you know, either to confuse or to, to manipulate black and brown people into never ma mattering on, on, on one another or, or, or in this country, right, in the United States. Uh, please, um, I, I'm trying to just to summarize the gist of it. This is two of our people that- So don't worry. Yeah, I have five minutes. This is two of the people that I usually use for my class. I, I, I think about it and I use bell hooks a lot. You know, I, I do use bell hooks a lot, even in my women and politics and women and gender studies. It's all bell hook. I make a breed bell hook until the cows, cows come home. Um, but Paulo Freire and, and, and Tick uh, Knock uh, Hond right, emphasize this idea of practice. What is this? Is practical, right? What practice is opposed to theoretical form that action and reflection, reflection upon the world in order to change it. And, and that was one of the groups, group seven, and they were talking about this idea that we, the next generation, we need to change the world. Yes, you need to look at it, reflect upon it, and then come up with a solution. How are we going to change it? And, and Thich Nhat Hanh says, also speaks about teacher as a healer. We, we should be healers. We should be healing this system. And, and he offers a way of thinking about pedagogy, which emphasizes holiness, the holiness of a union of mind, body, and spirit. And if you're not teaching like that, you are just teaching white supremacist thinking, right? That the students are more than you want just their mind. You wanted them to grogitate on paper what you told them. No, it's mind, body, and spirit. You need to build it up. I'm just going to let a few minutes. I'm not going to go through everything that I have because I want you guys, maybe you guys have some questions. I'm going to pause to see if you guys have some questions. If you, something that I said that, something that you still want to talk about. 
It's not about me and it's about you guys. Wow, doctor. Powerful. Gracias. Very powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you, where do you teach at? At East <laughs> Los Angeles College. Um, uh, Rosa is here. Rosa was my student. Yeah, Rosa? Rosa. Do you do seminars? Um, I would love to. If you guys want me to come, just invite me. I will. Okay. Yeah. I, I will. Um, I can give you my uh, email. Um, but if you go to East Los Angeles, you'll find me. I'm on at edu. Yeah, uh, Montero, Catalina. I, I understand exactly what you're talking about. Uh, and I don't know, it says Oxnard College. I forgot what you said. When people usually call me Natalie, I don't answer. I said, that's not my name. I said, just say it, Natalina. It's so easy. It's exactly like it sounds. So um, I don't know. Um, I could look, I could, um, you know, I still have a little bit more stuff, but, um, you know, this idea or the toolbox. Uh, Kelly, can you put the toolbox there for one second? Did Kelly disappear? The one that says toolbox. Uh, and this is the, um, the idea. No, 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 go forward, forward. Another, another one. I think there was some more in there. Yes, okay, uh, abolitionist teaching, right? What it is exactly, right? Uh, I don't know if I went through, through this, but this idea that, uh, you know, anti-racist education seeks, seeks to understand the everyday experience. So again, they're all talking about this body, mind, and spirit, okay? That the people of color, we, we come up more with not tight little packages. When we have more, we almost like the jack in the box that keep popping up. We have more stuff, right? That we 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 are leaving, we we leaving, enduring, and resist white supremacists and white rage because there is a lot of rage going around, right? That anti-racism teaching is not just about acknowledge the racist that exist, but about consciously committing to the struggle to fight for for racial justice right when you see somebody discriminate about asian against asian americans stand up and say something put your body in harm way okay it's not it's not the china virus right it's a virus that happened to show up in wuhan it could have showed up everywhere and you see now we have variants of it in different in different places right it says understanding where we stand in relation to the system of privilege if you are privileged you should say something Okay, and, and, and oppression and 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 unlearn the habits. That was the last question that somebody was saying. Uh, for example, uh, what what it is that what can I do about this? Um, no, no, go back, uh, Kelly, for one second. Um, the the last question that we we gave you guys, right? Somebody was saying, I don't understand it, and this is when you see somebody with with this um, telling you something that is not it that you know deep down inside to understand and learn the habits. I gave you guys an example of a sexist on that group, right? When you say, oh, it's just locker room talk. No, it's not. If you thought about it and it's not right, you know it in your conscience that that's not right, don't say it. It's either racist or it is sexist, right? And, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, stop talking because it's time, but I wanted to tell, read you guys just one more quote. Ella Baker says, my one says, the reduction of injustice is not the same as freedom, okay? The reduction of injustice is not the same as freedom. And that's what we have to strive for. Freedom to create our own reality where we can uplift humanity at all the centers of all decision-making. And you guys were talking about that to elevate everybody. You guys go back to your college, demand, to be in the hiring committee, especially for faculties. Demand, right? This is something that SSCCC should be doing. Demand that students be in those hiring committees, that being a vote, not just advisory, not as an advisory board, bullshit to that, but as a voting member. You guys should come up with a policy to do that. Please do that. If you're gonna remember anything that I told you today, go back start demanding that you vote for faculty. You be in that room, you listen to the people that come for the job and you guys vote for that person. Thank you so much, Kelly. Yes, um, I, I don't wanna 
take away from anything that you just said, because I feel like you spoke so eloquently and so passionately. Um, I don't know if it was mentioned before, but um, Natalina was my professor um, when I was at community college, and now I am her colleague, right? Um, and you can see why it was so easy, easy for me to fall in love with political science and to fall in love with this profession, because I, I aspire to be like her one day. I'm not there yet, but I aspire to be like her. Um, and I, I want to, I also want to just leave you with everything she said. I'm not going to add to what she said, but I do want to say that all of the conversations that you were having in the breakout rooms, a lot of you are commenting on how powerful um, uh, Dr. Montero spoke, but all of you were speaking equally as mm -hmm. powerful as she was. And I see it in those breakout rooms, right? Mm -hmm. And so, so don't belittle your words, right? Um, your words, your experiences are equal, right? Um, and, you know, she was just giving you different language to express um, mm -hmm. the, these very complex um, and difficult ideas and some that really aren't, right? Because some of this stuff seems very obvious. Um, so we hope that you enjoyed our session today and we hope that you continue to be self-critical, self-aware and um, examine yourselves and your actions. Be uncomfortable, right? Being anti-racist means that you're going to be uncomfortable a majority of the time. All right. Um, thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. I know virtual class. <laughs> So you all have you all have my email. You can email me. You got my name. Please, you know, if you need something, let us know. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Natalina and Kelly, for sharing and having this hard discussion with us. As for all of you, I hope that you have gotten a chance to get that email and contact information. And additionally, please share your experience with us on the app or on the survey. And once again, thank you so much for having this hard discussion. I know it was not easy, but it was so incredibly powerful, especially during this time. And we just passed through a ethnic studies resolution that we are excited to soon implement. So with that being said, thank you all so, so very much. And with that being said, I will pass it back over to our vice president if she's still on the line.